Hello everyone, welcome to Form 3 Mathematics, Chapter 5, Trigonometric Ratios. So actually, trigonometric ratios is a part of trigonometry, where trigonal here in the Greek means triangle, and metry here means to measure. So it is a study of relations of the sides and angles of triangles. So in short, trigonometry is a study of triangles. But in this chapter, we are going to deal with trigonometric ratios which only applies to right angle triangles so throughout the whole chapter 5 we are dealing with right angle triangles so just in case you don't know what is a right angle triangles so the properties of a right angle triangles is that one of the angle must be a, a 90 degrees angle a right angle so uh, these are some of the examples so the first part of this video is we want to learn how to identify the opposite side, adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. So actually in Form 1, you already learn hypotenuse when you, uh, when you learn about Pythagoras' theorem. So we do a very quick revision. Hypotenuse is the side of a right angle triangle which is opposite, which is opposite to the 90 degrees. Yeah, the, fate, the opposite side here, this one, the PQ here, we name this side, the side PQ, as hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is also the longest side of a right angle triangle. Take note. So how about the side PR and the side PQ? What is the name of these two sides? So one of the sides we name them opposite side and the other one we name as adjacent. But which one is opposite, which one is adjacent, it depends. It depends on the ang uh, reference angle. So for this uh, uh, triangle again, since we already know that PQ is hypotenuse, then now we take one of the angles here. Okay, so we take this angle as a reference angle and we label it as X. So the side which is opposite to the angle X here, opposite, which is PR here, we name this as the opposite side. Whereas RQ, since it is adjacent to the angle X, hence we call this the adjacent side. But the name of the side will change if we take a different reference angle. So if we take this angle here as a reference angle, the opposite of this angle will be now RQ. So RQ will be opposite side. And the side PR will be the adjacent side. So opposite side and adjacent side will change depends on the position of the reference angle. And it also depends on us to take which angle we want as a reference angle. And this reference angle, take note, is an acute angle. And you learn that acute angle are angles that is less than 90 degrees. So we look at example number one. Based on the angle, a, C, B. Okay, so A, C, B. State the opposite side and adjacent side for the triangle. So A, C, B has, uh, is here. I already not, uh, marked the reference angle. So the opposite side will be side A, B. Whereas B, C is, uh, or C, B here is the adjacent side. How about A, C? A, C is the hypotenuse because it is opposite to the right angle. So after you understand the name of the sides, we want to look at the relationship between a given acute angle, like for example this x here, and the ratio of the sides of the right angle triangle. We want to find the relationship between this angle and the ratio of the sides, adjacent side, opposite side, or the hypotenuse. So right now, you are given a triangle ABC, which is a right angle triangle because it's shown here. So if we take this angle here as a reference angle and then we try to find the ratio between opposite side and hypotenuse to find the ratio here means we measure the length of opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse so opposite side is this because the angle is here so the opposite is the bc we find the length and we divide by hypotenuse hypotenuse is this because this side is opposite to the right angle so the length of the BC divided by the length of AC. Okay, this is the ratio. And now, 
if I extend AC, I try to draw AC longer within a straight line, and then I extend AB from A to B1, and I draw a straight line here, I form a bigger triangle AB1C1. I form a big triangle with the same angle, with the same reference angle. So now with by referring to the big triangle, the opposite side now will be this B1, C1, and the hypotenuse will be A, C1, from A to C1. So if we measure this B1, C1, and we divide by A, C1, we will find that the values, when we divide this with this, the values is actually equals to BC over AC. And if we ex further extend AC1 and we further extend AB1, we can form another bigger triangle. And now from this, the biggest triangle here, we take the opposite side, which is B2 of B2C2, we measure this length and we divide by the hypotenuse AC1, C2, sorry, AC2. If you take this, we measure this, we and then we measure this, we divide this with this. We found that the values after we divide is also equals to this, equals to this. So meaning that the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse is always the same. They have the same value. If we get if we calculate this, we get the value of 2. We also get the 2, we also get 2 here. The values are the same. So it means that the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse for all these triangles are the same with reference to the same angle. So we name this relation and or this trigonometric ratio here, we name this as sine. The formula for sine here is sine of an angle, this is an angle, equals to the opposite side divided by hypotenuse. We are going to discuss this in the next part on, on the calculations, but I give a very quick example to show you how are you going to use this to, to find the value of sine x. So let's say if you're given a right angle triangle measure, with the measurement 6 cm here, 8 cm and 10 cm, how are we going to find the value of sine x? So sine x according to this formula is opposite side, so x here, so the opposite is this, which is 6, and the hypotenuse is 10. So sine x is 6 over 10. And we simplify this, we get 3 over 5, then this is the answer. So sine x equals to 3 over 5. What does this imply? What information can we get from here? Why do we want to find sine x? So that we leave it for the next subtopic. So in this part, we just focus on how to use the formula, how to use these trigonometric uh, ratios to get the values. And how are you going to use the values to solve problems? We leave it for the next subtopic. So we are, we are not done with this part yet because the next relation that we are going to look at is the adjacent side over hypotenuse. So using the same diagram, the adjacent side for the smallest triangle here, the adjacent, uh, the adjacent side will be AB and the hypotenuse will be AC. If we measure them and we divide them, we will find that the adjacent side for the other triangles, which is AB1 divided by the hypotenuse, which is AC1, equals to this from the smallest triangle. And the biggest triangle here, the adjacent side will be AB1, AB2 divided by the, its hypotenuse, which is AC2, we found that the values is also the same, meaning that the ratio is constant, it's always, they always have the same value. So this relation here, or this trigonometric ratio here, we name this as cosine. So this uh, cosine x equals to adjacent side over hypotenuse. And this is how we write cosine, we just write COS, which means cosine. So now we go to the third one. So still using the same diagram. This time we are look, going to look at opposite side over adjacent. So opposite side is BC over adjacent side, which is AB. So we measure this value, we divide by this value. We find that for the other triangles, the same happens. 
Yeah, the opposite side for the other triangles, when you divide by their adjacent side, which is C1, B1 over A, B1, you find that they also have the same values. So this trigonometric ratio here, we, we name this ratio as tangent. And tangent X, again here and here stands for tangent. Tangent X equals to opposite side over adjacent side. So you have these three trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, that you need to memorize. So how are you going to memorize this? We look at all these three functions, uh, all these three trigonomet trigonometric ratios again. We just take the first letter of uh, this uh, relation. So S equals to O over H, where S stands for sine, O for opposite side, H for hypotenuse. So how are you going to Memorize this, we use S O H. The same applies to the rest C A H, C A H, T O A, tangent, opposite side, adjacent side, T O A. So, so ka toa. This is how we usually memorize the three basic trigonometric ratios that you are going to use throughout the whole chapter. So now after you know about these three trigonometric ratios, we try to use this to determine the values when you are given a right angle triangle. So now for example, one diagram shows a right angle triangle ABC, ABC, clear the value of sine x, cosine x, and tangent x. So the sine x I already shown you just now. We take this uh, diagram again. So since x is already given here as a reference angle, so the opposite side of this angle is 6 and the hypotenuse is 10 because hypotenuse is opposite to the right angle triangle 6 over 10 and simplify this it must be simplified it is equals to 3 over 5 to find the value of cosine x we use the formula cosine adjacent side hypotenuse so the adjacent side for this angle is 8 the hypotenuse is still 10, so it's 8 over 10, simplified this, you get 4 over 5. The last one is tangent, TOA is TOA, so tangent equals tangent x equals to opposite over adjacent. So the opposite of x, angle x here is 6, adjacent is 8, so, so 6 over 8, simplified it becomes 3 over 4. So we look at example number 2. So we look at the triangle again, make sure it is a right angle triangle. Before we find sine, cosine, and tangent, it is always uh, better if we find all the values of all the sides. So given this side is 5 cm, this side is 12, we find the value of PR. So since this is a right angle triangle, we can use Pythagoras theorem to find the value of hypotenuse. So we use the Pythagoras theorem to find this. So according to Pythagoras theorem, the hypotenuse squared equals to the square of this side plus the square of this side. So PR squared equals to PQ squared plus QR squared. So we substitute the values, we get 12 squared plus 5 squared, and then it's 169. And then uh, to find PR, we find the square root of 169, which is 13. So now we know that PR is 13 centimeters. Then we can start to find the sine. So sine of the angle QRP. Which one is the angle QRP? So we look at QRP. So, we, so which one is the angle of QRP? So we look at the one in the middle, R. Yeah, QRP, the one in the middle here is R, means this is the angle that we are looking for. This is the reference angle. So we are looking for sine of this angle. So the sine of QRP here equals to opposite side over hypotenuse according to the formula. If this is the angle, the opposite will be 12. And the hypotenuse is always this side, which is 13. So it's 12 over 13. So the sine is 12 over 13, which cannot be simplified anymore. You can use a calculator to double check. And that will be the answer. Okay, next. Uh, we are looking at the... We need to calculate cosine of the angle QRP. So since we already know this is uh, angle QRP, Cosine, the formula is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent of this angle will be this 5 cm over hypotenuse, which is 13. So it's 5 over 13. And for the last one, we have the tangent of this angle again, the same angle. So according to the formula, tangent 
it goes to opposite side over adjacent side. So this angle, the opposite will be 12, adjacent will be 5. So it's 12 over 5. Since this cannot be simplified anymore, this will be the final answer. That's all, thank you. So this is the end of part 1 video. Thank you.